Welcome to or welcome back on Watch Advice on YouTube. It's Alexander speaking, your host, and on your screen you see the Parmigiani Fleurier Tonda PF Micro Rotor. The watch on your picture is a very well-sized, thin, luxury sports watch. Parmigiani is a brand for connoisseur. You need to know the brand and you need to be really into the brand. There is almost no logo. You don't see a real logo on the dial. You only see the seal, the Parmigiani seal on the dial. And it is a watch for a sophisticated a connoisseur who really seeks for something different. Who does not want to show off with a brand name on the dial, but instead with knowing what's behind and enjoying what he has and really enjoying this discreet luxury object. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. The case diameter of the Tonda PF micro rotor is 40 millimeter. And if you're now wondering, if you're watching more often videos here on our channel, I'm using today a black pointer, but don't be scared. It is again a plastic pointer, dedicated plastic pointer um, done by a Swiss company called Bergeron. I will just try to show it here. And you can see it, uh, Bergeron Swiss made. So it is a plastic pointer, dedicated pointer to do such tasks. So you can, I cannot scratch the watch by any means. So let's come back to the watch. The thickness of this Parmigiani watch is uh, 7.8 millimeter, 7.8. And I have been measuring the lug to lug distance from one lug end to the other lug end. And this is 41 millimeter in the configuration as you see the watch here. More or less fitting the size of my wrist size with 17 centimeters with all the links you see here. The watch has a weight of 130 grams. So let me turn it around and show you uh, the bracelet. It is a partly brushed and polished bracelet. So we have lots of brushed inner links and we do on the outer side have some polished links. And we have here the Parmigiani Fleurier seal that is nestled into the folding clasp. Yes, it is a butterfly folding clasp, a butterfly folding clasp that um, holds or yeah, brings the watch perfectly on your wrist. But no, there is no micro length adjustment available. All the adjustments have to be done by unscrewing one of the pins. Uh, several pins are, there are several links you can unscrew by taking out those pins and uh, you have to then find the ideal length for your wrist so there is no micro length adjustment. I'll show that again. It is a typical butterfly clasp very nicely done with the Parmigiani logo. Yes, of course, integrating it but you see here that there is a part that has been milled out. So when you close it, the Parmigiani seal perfectly gets in there and closes. The gray dial has a wonderful surface finishing. It's a Grand Dorge Guillaume. It's a machine turned dial and gives it a very interesting and very particular surface. Depending on the light that falls on it, changes in between a uh, gray and black and has really some interesting 
um, shades and uh, yeah uh, nuances you can discover by watching it. It's a question of light, light angle, light intensity, etc. The indexes or the indices on the dial, as you see them here, are hand applied rhodium plated obliques. The hands you see here are 18 karat gold hands, rhodium plated, skeletonized, delta shaped hands, and of course. In the center, no name, just the Parmigiani logo, three-dimensional in the center of the dial, but there is no name, Parmigiani, Fleurier, Superlative, this, uh, incredible, that, nothing. It is pure. It is really understated luxury as one might want to have uh, because there is nothing you need to say about the Parmigiani watch because you already know everything when you buy it. And in a series of videos, starting with this Tonda PF Micro Rotor Watch Advisor will present you the Parmigiani Company. So this is the first video of a series of videos that will follow very soon. We will film at the Parmigiani facilities in January 17th, 18th and 19th and the videos will go online then one after the other. So to tell you who is Parmigiani, Parmigiani, Michel Parmigiani was a watchmaker and together with the uh, Sun Do family foundation he founded this watchmaking company. And who are Sun Do? You may remember they are pharmaceutical manufacturers and they got together with Siba Gaigi, Sando and Siba Gaigi merged together to become Novartis in 1996. And the family, the Sando family has its own foundation and founded the watchmaking company in 1996. And today the Sando family, the Sando foundation has hotels, watchmaking, art and culture. And watchmaking is not only, they are not only putting a logo on a dial and buying all the components. No, 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 absolutely not. The Sando Watchmaking Center, as they call it, the Sando Family Foundation Watchmaking Center, is made out of Atto Kalpa. Gears, the oscillator and the hairspring are done there. It's a highly specialized company manufacturing gears for movements and they are also able to produce their own hairsprings and the entire escapement. Then you have Vosche Manufacture, movements. Movements means that they are conceiving, manufacturing their own movements. No external movements are used in a Parmigiani watch. They're all in-house movements. Just to give you another idea about what these movements are about, also Richard Mill is buying them for his watches and the Hermes, Hermes family, Hermes group owns a stake of 25% in Vosche and they also get their movements from Vosche. And Vosche, of course, benefits of the fact that there is Atto Kalpa, as I just told you, with the gears, the necessary gears and the entire escapement. Then you have another specialized company is called Elvin, also part of the Parmigiani group. And Elvin is highly specialized in bar turning machines to manufacture some of the very best and tiniest screws of the industry. And it's not only them using them, Parmigiani and Elvin is selling these screws to Patek Philippe, to Breugge, to all the big names because they are the best screws you can get for micro engineering purposes and micro watchmaking needs you have. And then, of course, the case is done in-house. Les Artisans Pot Boitier, they have an own case manufacturing and the dial is also done in-house. So it's really a manufacturer with 100%. It's 100% in-house what you see. So there's no cheating. There's no buying left and right. It is a manufacturer and this manufacturing Watchmaking Center or this fund, uh, the Sando Family Foundation Watchmaking Center is something you will discover with us in a series of videos in January. The movement powering this Parmigiani watch is the PF703. It's an automatic winding manufacturer movement. As I said, with a platinum micro rotor, you see here, the micro rotor is made out of platinum. It's a 3 hertz movement. 
21,600 semi oscillation. The movement is composed out of 176 components, has a diameter of 30 millimeters and a thickness of only 3 millimeter. Three. Oh, that's really a thin, thin movement. The main plates are decorated with Côte de Genève and a perlage. So you really see that the finishing is on a very high and very luxury level. Nothing has been left unfinished. Also, all the parts you don't see underneath are, of course, of course decorated and not only the surfaces on top. And uh, Micro Rotor has the same type of guilloche or engine, has the same engine turned surface and it is the Grand Dorge finishing uh, the same as you also have on the dial. The uh, sapphire crystal on the case back has an anti-reflective treatment on the inner side. You just saw it. there are some reflections, of course, when I'm turning it. And yep, and the sapphire crystal on the front side is has an anti-reflective treatment on both sides, but 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 is not completely flat. And this is the reason why we do have also some reflections coming when you are turning it and I will try to handle this for you and when I go and once again this is a plastic pointer so please I'm not scratching anything here and you see here that this is a slightly domed sapphire crystal as you can see when I go over it and this looks good, gives a very three-dimensional look because a lots of, there's lots of light also to the huge aperture you have here with a very slim basal. Uh, you have lots of light coming into the dial, but also causes, yes, if I'm turning it, you see some reflections left and right. Unavoidable, unavoidable, but this is how it is. But the readability is good because you have some reflections coming from this polished rhodium plated skeletonized delta shaped hands and you get a good readability of time and uh, to mention the um, date disc is of course 100% the color of the date disc is 100% matching the color of the dial of course and the lower level sandblasted mini track if you look it's not the same level as the dial. We can see that it is on a little bit on a lower level and it is sandblasted, so gives a little bit of a contrast to the guilloche uh, patterns that have been applied on the dial. And yeah, looks very nice, very luxurious. And yeah, it is a luxury watch. And if you're thinking now, I, have, uh, that I said in the beginning, it's a sports watch. Can I use it? Yes, you can. The case is waterproof 100 meters, as it should be. The crown is a screw down crown. I'm unscrewing it and I can do it with gloves. And this is always good if I'm able to do things with gloves. The handling is perfect. And the quality when you unscrew and when you get in the first position, the winding position of that crown, the haptic is excellent. There's nothing shaky here. It's a really solid, solid um, engineering you are encountering. First position, you set the date. This is where I have been coming to and I quickly wanted to rush through with you to show you some of the other numbers so you can imagine how the date looks like. This is the first now. And I'm quickly rushing through here so you have the occasion to see the other numbers if you're interested to see them. Now it's double digit again and you see how they look like. I have to... And there's a solid click. Every time I turn, click, 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 20. And I will get back to the 27th. And also show you the date change with the hands as it would appear when you were wearing the watch. So we are getting in the second position. I've been setting the watch to 10 past 10 as always and now I'm X accelerating a little bit the entire thing and you will see what how the date change looks like. Watch closely we are 10 p.m. now 
and we are at 11 p.m. and you see uh, the date change has started slowly and is finishing at midnight. So it's not an instantaneous date change but uh, a date change that more or less needs an hour to set the new date but finishes at least exactly at 12 o'clock. The main design element of this watch is the basal and it is a platinum 950 platinum hand knurled basal so you see this fine surface and this is giving the watch let's say its face its particular look and is the um, yeah main let's say first thing you see when you Look on the dial, surrounded by this wonderfully nicely made basal out of platinum. And also good to mention is that the case has some satin finishes and has some polished finishes and is a medical steel. So it is a superior steel that they use to manufacture these cases. These are the lugs ending going over into the flanks. And you see here round elements, polished matte surfaces, a combination of beautiful design. It's not a real, let me say, puristic technical design. The design is still a warm design, a gentle design, and it makes the watch look very noble, very luxurious on your wrist. So what is the potential buyer or who could the potential buyer be of such a watch from Parmigiani? I think it's the gentleman, it is the connoisseur who really want is, wants to distinguish himself and not by one of the big names where it is already flashing or where you have kind of a bling bling on it saying, okay, I'm wearing a Patek Philippe, I'm wearing an Old Mach Piguet, I'm wearing a Rolex, I'm wearing, oh, you know, all the other brands that are potential, potential competitors. The Parmigiani is an alternative, I would say. Uh, a watch that you have to like, you have to discover yourself. It is a watch that probably you will need to explain when someone sees it on your wrist. It's not a watch that will tell a story by its own, like the Royal Oak from Audemars does, or any Nautilus or other sports watch from Patek Philippe. It's a watch you will have to add some own story, but there is lots to tell. And Parmigiani is a, is a really fascinating brand. The founder of the brand, Michel Parmigiani, is a one of the really grand seigneurs in horology. He is a real watchmaker who learns from scratch doing what he is able to do. And it is now Guido Terrini who took over and who is the new CEO. And you all know Guido Terrini because he was the CEO of the Bulgari watchmaking division before. And all these Beautiful, ultra-thin Bulgari watches are the things or are the work or is the uh, heritage he left back at Bulgari. It is, it was him and the designers who developed those watches, but he was responsible of doing it. And now Guido Terreni is the new CEO at Parmigiani and we will talk to him, of course, in the videos. We are filming from the 17th to the 19th January and they will go on then some days later and we will show you in detail Parmigiani, what is behind and we will present you Guido and you will see the boss <laughs> himself in conversation with me in the videos, of course. I think I've been able to show you everything. What I did not mention yet is the price. The price of this watch uh, is 21,000 Swiss francs, including uh, Swiss uh, VAT. Um, it's a recommended sales price. I told you before, it's a stainless steel watch featuring a platinum basal featuring an in-house movement, of course, 100% in-house and in-house dial, in-house, in-house, in-house. I could go on talking half 
for another hour explaining you all the details. But you will discover everything in the video I have been already announcing a couple of times. So thank you very much for um, watching the video. Um, let me know what you think. Um, let me know if you would be open to buy such a luxury object, as I said, where you have to um, be open for it. You have to um, discover it and you have to like it and you have to be able to wear a brand that only features a very discreet logo on its style and not a prominent logo already crying out who the watch is. Are you ready to wear such a watch? Would you be interested? Etc. Et Let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching the video. As always, I hope you liked it. And yep, don't miss the videos in the second half of next January 2022. Bye bye for today.